speaker Steve Siebel doesn't mince words when it comes to dissecting the human psyche. Widely credited for being an expert in critical thinking, he's the author of a best selling book on mental toughness, which he says can be applied to just about anything from losing weight to succeeding in your personal and professional lives. Steve joins us now to help us understand the thinking behind his thinking. How are you? Hey, good, Mark. It's good to have you here. Good Thanks to see you. so much. Uh, people worry these days that we are losing critical thinking skills because we don't always know how to navigate all the information that's out there in the world. What do you think is the top thing we need to do to challenge our own thinking and make sure that we're being reasonable and fresh? Well, critical thinking is really making decisions based on greater criteria, devoid of emotion. And I think probably the biggest problem is we get emotional and it clouds our judgment around finances, around relationships, around almost anything. Right. What do you tell people to do to sort of move them out of that space of emotion towards reason? Well, for one, let's just take money, for example, since money's let's on everyone's money. mind all the time. <laughs> yeah, never get emotional about money. Never get emotional about markets. Look at them through the eyes of logic and try to turn off your emotion. We use emotion for motivation and logic to steer the motivation. Right. Do you think that the way the media has fractured is part of this problem that we have that we we don't really have trusted gatekeepers of information anymore and you really do have to be proactive in trying to vet the information that comes your way. Yeah, I couldn't have said it better. Absolutely. Yeah, th there's a lot of bias obviously in the media it's either right or left and you know different areas but yeah, I think you have to really navigate it for yourself more than in the past. So, when you try to reach an opinion about something or a conclusion, what process do you go through? To try to go through the neutral sources for one for information, you know, and then and then try to take it through a process of turning off my emotions, turning off my biases, my prejudices. Mm -hmm. And just try to look at it through the eyes of logic. It's not the easiest thing to do, but you do get better after a while. Can you give me an example? I'll tell you what I do. When I hear something, for example, about politics, I try to imagine that I don't know who said it and then think about it because I don't want to be colored by do I find that person credible or not. Just forget that. Deal with the fact of whatever it is they said and try to focus on that. What do you do to examine something? in a critical way. I think that's a great example. I just take away all the personalities, all the personal attacks between let's say people you're, you know, someone you want to might want to vote for and just look at the facts, just the objective facts, not the personal opinions of the pundits, but just the objective facts and make a decision based on that. What are the ways that we might also pass this habit down to our kids so that you know, I, I don't want my son to believe whatever I believe. I want him to believe what he honestly arrives at. So what's the best way to make that happen? I think to teach your kids that most people, even in the richest country in the world, America, are not getting what they want. They're capable of it. They're smart enough. They're educated enough. But they're not getting what they want. And to tell them that. That means they're going to hear things from their teachers they should probably ignore, things in the church, maybe things from their sports coaches, and just all different influences that we all have as children, and help them become independent thinkers mm -hmm. that can think on their own. You know what the downside side of that is if you teach your child to question authority guess who he questions first that's this is why i don't have it kids mom, mom. <laughs> <laughs> no kids for me this is why and if we moved <laughs> towards what you advocate which is just a better reasonable more you know able critical thinking society what would be different Oh, so many things. I mean, just look at the financial markets. The financial markets are, are run completely on fear and greed. Right. I mean, it would change the markets right off the bat. You know, you would have a lot more linear experience. You'd know what to expect, in other words, uh, with home prices, uh, stock prices, mm -hmm. almost anything. There's so much emotion because human beings are emotional creatures. Right. But if we can learn to control our emotions, which is what mental toughness is, it changes the game. And to separate belief from fact. Exactly. Different things. Um, I really, I love your books, and I think they're well worth reading so that people can kind of figure out, you know, challenge your own thinking and even if you've been doing it this way for a long time it's possible to change right definitely anyone can do this it's, <laughs> it doesn't take it's not rocket science it's just a matter of breaking it down learning how to be a critical thinker or a better critical thinker and doing it anyone is capable of doing this Steve thank you I Thanks, appreciate Margaret. it thanks thank so you. much when we come back we're gonna have answers to the biggest questions you have about voting in this year's local and national elections stay tuned for that Steve thanks so much <laughs>